Hello folks, Tiger Virtual here. Welcome back to a, another video on the channel. Today, something uh, a little bit different to the normal flight sim videos. Today, I'm gonna try and deep dive or at least touch upon my current P3D uh, 5.3 settings. Now, um, I can see that a lot of my uh, previous videos um, on my old settings are still being watched on YouTube. So I thought it'd be um, the right idea to set, uh, bring uh, you up to date with the latest settings that I currently have in the sim and uh, what things I've changed as obviously if my previous videos I have now uh, changed certain elements of how I've got certain um, cloud structures or weather engines etc etc installed in the sim and then also I think I have uh, slightly improved my settings um, in terms of VRAM usage and to get the best performance out of uh, out of the sim uh, as you can see I'm currently sitting down at Heathrow um, don't worry I'm logged on as an observer on the VATSIM network so I just wanted to have a bit of traffic uh, around in the, in the sim rather than me just talking and what I wanted to sort of show is that um, Heathrow is probably one of the heftiest uh, sceneries on VRAM and, and uh, performance in P3D so I wanted to sort of uh, use this as an example that you still can get a decent FPS and a decent vert amount of VRAM usage um, whilst at Heathrow because I know in the past uh, flying into Heathrow has put me off because of the performance uh, loss or the lack, lack of performance you get on approach into Heathrow and uh, when you're on the ground. Yeah, you can, in fact, you can look back at a previous video that I've done, a live stream on YouTube, which I will put in the link uh, in the top right hand corner now of my latest video. In fact, it was in this uh, livery, the A319, um, which, which I was streamed a few days ago uh, before me um, recording this video. But what we're going to do um, is uh, we're going to show off uh, so my P3D V5 settings, then I'm going to show you my Active Sky settings, and then I'll finish off with my um, Rec Sky 4 settings. I'll, I'll ex it'll explain everything will come. Uh, I'll explain everything and why I'm using both uh, Active Sky and Rex uh, once we get moving forward. So I'm inside. We're inside the display setting on P3D, and I just wanted to run for you through these settings. Now, obviously, please bear in mind that obviously I'm running um, a i9 9900K, 32 gigs of RAM, and a GTX uh, GeForce GT RTX 2070 Super. So please bear that in mind that these are my settings for my perform performance of my PC. Obviously, you guys might be better, might be worse, but obviously, please bear in mind. Um, that you might get better performance or not so good performance depending on the spec of your PC. Now, um, in previous videos, again, I have locked my frames to 30 FPS. In this uh, V5 5.3 update, haven't necessarily needed to. Uh, I found that I'm getting quite good performance without having to lock my frames to a certain FPS. So, um, yeah, as you can see back on previous videos, that I have locked frames. I don't think that's necessary anymore for my setup anyway it's not really uh, required so starting on image and texture quality then fxaa is off uh, anti-aliasing is that eight times ssaa uh, i've got it up that high just because i think it makes the cockpit look a lot nicer um it does uh, fs labs when you first i've been open it for the first time it does too to turn it down but i left it as it is and i don't really see much performance difference uh, texture filtering is eight times and texture resolution i have set to medium now I have toyed with it being on high, never be, never put it on ultra because I'm not a full, I'm not using a 4K monitor. But I have messed around with putting it on a medium and high, and I have found that there isn't a lot of difference in having it on medium and high. I, me personally, I haven't seen a lot of difference, so I leave mine at medium. It just gives me a little bit more um, performance in the sim and more FPS um, when it comes to places like Heathrow, etc. Uh, I can leave dynamic texture streaming to off, uh, VSync off, and target frames obviously unlocked, unlimited, uh, nothing too uh, out, out of the ordinary here. If I come over to world, then I'll try and go through this as quickly as possible. Uh, you can pause the video obviously at any time to double check or try and copy the settings that I have. Uh, level of uh, detail radius is set to high, tessellation factor is high, uh, mesh uh, resolution is set to two meters. Uh, text to res is at 15 centimeters. I don't have um, high resolution texture uh, resolution textures on. Um, scenery objects, scenery complexity is set to dense. Auto gen is high. Uh, auto gen 
uh, vegetation density is dense. The same with building des uh, density is also set to dense. Uh, I have dynamic uh, 3D autogen vegetation as ticked. Uh, water level detail is set to medium. Uh, reflections are clouds and uh, user vehicles. Uh, special effects, I've got them both set to high. Now, this is where I'm, I'm start. I'll, this is where I wanted to sort of stop and sort of now I need to explain the reasons why I'm using Rex and Active Sky. Now, in previous versions of P3D, I haven't bothered with uh, enhanced atmospherics because I just thought the cloud textures were like waffles basically, um, and they look didn't look very appealing. And I was always, I just defaulted back to Aska or, or Rex clouds. But now in this 5.3 update, that you will have the ability to use. Um, and enhance atmospherics which gives you good PBR especially in the uh, FS labs but then you don't have to use the clouds so what I do is that I don't I use enhanced atmospherics but I actually use my Rex uh, I use Rex the cloud the cloud art so I've got Rex Skyforce uh, for version 5 P3D version 5 so um, I will run through my Rex settings in a little while or well, in, in the next part of this video um, but that is the reason why I still I use Active Sky for my weather. I could use Rex for weather engine, but I just find Active Sky a lot better at the weather engine part. So, um, at enhanced atmospherics is on. Volumetric clouds is set to off. Um, God rays is, is unticked. I don't, I, don't, I don't need that. I don't like that. Wind shear effects on, and turbulence and thermal effects are set to tick. Uh, weather rate of change is no change because obviously my weather is being provided from Active Sky. And the only difference is that my cloud draw distance and my cloud cover density I have set to the highest, 110 miles, and obviously the maximum. Uh, I actually get um, notified in Active Sky that I need to have that set uh, for it to sort of be, give you the best sort of look and feel. Uh, but I say the weather stuff will go back to once we finish the P3DV5 settings, and then we'll go into Active Sky next, and then followed by Rex or have which way around decide to do it at the time. <coughs> Lighting, uh, obviously enable. I've enabled uh, HDR lighting. You can't really uncheck that. I leave auto exposure off. I just don't like the look of it. Um, it's just personal preference again. Brightness, bloom, and saturation are all set to one. Now these obviously are completely up to you guys. You can decide whether you want to have them up, down, left, right, what, diagonal, whatever you, which way you want to have them. So obviously bear that in mind. These are just my settings. Uh, I like them this way. So obviously you guys pick whatever you want to feel comfortable with. Dynamic reflections I set to low. Uh, I have dynamic lighting ticked and lens flare. Just again, don't like the look of lens, uh, display lens flare. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that checked. And then finally shadows then, uh, both set to high and I'll have uh, shadow types are for cast are only on external and internal vehicles, nothing else is uh, checked. So they are my settings. Um, like I say, you can copy those settings uh, if you so wish, um, but they are the settings for uh, my version of P3D V5. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over my Rex Sky 4 settings and the cloud settings that I have uh, in the sim. So this is Rex Skyforce. I think you should, I think everyone knows what Rex Skyforce uh, looks like, or um, you've used it before. If you haven't, then you can pick this up from either the Rex uh, store itself, or you can pick it up from uh, Sim Market. I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen or used Rex before. But this is what I use for my cloud textures only. So I've turned the weather weather engine off for Rex, and I'm using Active Sky for weather, and I'll show you my Active Sky settings in a few moments but this is just the clouds itself i'd much prefer rex clouds than i do to like default clouds or asker clouds um i've just found that this looks way better than um than anything that I, i've stumbled across over time so um, what i'll do is i'll try my hardest to basically provide you with what i have i mean you guys can see it now uh, i use set nine for 3d clouds set six for the uh the cloud uh, types uh, dawn I use the set number six. Uh, set six to go for day sky. Day sky set set six for dusk sky. Uh, sun is effect number thirteen. Moon set one. Lightning five. And uh, environment sounds. I think I've just got them ticked. Um, but the most importantly, I guess, is at my actual physical settings uh, for those. Um, you can see them here. Cloud textures. Everything's basically ticked for what I want it to have. Um, my 3D cloud resolution is set to 1024 times 1024. How, again, could probably turn those up, but again, I don't want to sort of kill my performance. 
uh, in the sim. I want to sort of keep that nice balance. But again, please try and mess around. I just find this works for me as we stand. These settings right here work for me. And then HDR, uh, pretty much, you can't really mess around with this page, to be brutally honest with you. This is just what it is um, when it comes out of the box with Rex. So I really hope that explains why I'm using Rex. I just prefer the clouds in Rex than I do uh, Asker or P3D itself. I don't like the look of the enhanced atmospheric clouds because they look like waffles. They just look really like they don't look proper. They, you know, they don't look like real clouds. Um, so that's why I'm using Rex. So I hope you appreciate that. And finally, Active Sky. So Active Sky, I use for my weather engine only. Um, so this is where obviously the weather is driven in for all. I use real time weather, and I think pretty much the settings for this are as you get them out of the box. I, I don't think I've changed them too much because I don't need. I don't feel like I need to change them. Um, again, I've kept everything as default as possible, and hopefully it gives me the best performance visually over uh, sorry best performance in terms of the sim as it does look and feel so um yeah you can copy these settings but basically maximum cloud layers is set to five maximum cloud turbulence is set to five uh the maximum cloud icing is set to 100 these are all default values by the way these are nothing in here um that i've actually changed the only thing i've actually changed in this is turned off the application startup sound because it's just really annoying i don't know why this feature is sitting inside um active sky i, I also have disabled all the uh the, the messages that you get uh, in the sim so nothing pops up about loading a flight plan or their weather or anything of that sort such um when you're when you're in the sim so that that's i suppose the only thing i've really turned off again i might chain mess around with these uh might mess around with these settings in the future but right now i have no desire to do that i feel i feel personally i like the way my sim looks i like the performance i'm getting in such places such as heathrow for example where we're sitting in today i prefer i prefer that so again it's a personal preference you guys this, this is just a basis of what I'm using if you want to copy that. If I get enough uh, comments from you guys down below for M Tex and M Shade, then obviously I will 100% um, go through my settings for that. But again, they're pretty default, but I'm happy to go through everything for you guys and double and, and make sure that you guys have got exactly what I've got. So I really hope you've liked this video. Um, I hope it's not too uh short or not too long i hope you haven't waffled too much and please pause the video as and where you feel please leave me a comment if you have any questions in regards to the sim uh, your sim or you need a hand with anything we have got a really good community in my discord which i will put a link in the description down below we do help each other out it's a very cool community so if you guys feel ever you need to join the discord for even if it's just ask a couple of questions and leave 100% please do so as I've got doubled up jetways there. That's a bug I need to fix. Flying sim is never is never as straightforward, is it? Um, please do please do consider hitting, uh, please do join the Discord. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the channel and you did like this video, please, please, please hit, consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, turn on that notification bell. I do live streams uh, twice a week on YouTube and I drop a video uh, once a week I'm really trying to stick to that schedule and most importantly please do leave a thumbs up on the video because that really really helps the channel grow and really really shows appreciation from you guys so thank you very much for watching this video I've been Toga Virtual and I'll see you next time